Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My sister's jealousy drove her to destroy my wedding. But when the truth came out, my sister was the one who lost everything. Growing up, my family was everything to me. We were a tight-knit group, and I cherished the time we spent together. My sister and I were especially close. We did everything together, from playing dress-up to going on family vacations. But as we got older, things started to change. My sister became more competitive and jealous, especially when it came to relationships. She always wanted to be the one who had the boyfriend or the one who was getting married first. I didn't mind at first. I was happy to let her have the spotlight, but then things started to get personal. She would make comments about my appearance, saying that I was too ugly to ever find love. I tried to brush it off, but it hurt. It wasn't until I met my future husband that I truly began to feel confident in myself. We met through a mutual friend at a party, and from the moment we started talking, I knew that he was someone special. He was kind, funny, and so easy to talk to. We went on a few dates, and before I knew it, I was head over heels in love. He was everything I had ever wanted in a partner, and I couldn't believe that someone like him could be interested in someone like me. After a few months of dating, my future husband surprised me with a romantic proposal. He took me on a hike up to our favorite spot in the mountains, and when we reached the top, he got down on one knee and asked me to marry him. I was overwhelmed with emotion, and tears streamed down my face as I said yes. He slid a beautiful diamond ring onto my finger, and we held each other close as the sun set behind us. It was the most beautiful moment of my life, and I knew that I had found my soulmate. I couldn't wait to share the news with my family, but I was also a little nervous about how my sister would react. She had always been competitive with me, and I knew that my engagement would only fuel her jealousy. When I told my parents, they were thrilled for me. They could see how happy my future husband made me, and they couldn't wait to welcome him into the family. They also reassured me that they would handle my sister if she tried to cause any trouble. As expected, my sister did not take the news well. She said things like, I can't believe someone would want to marry you and you're too ugly to be loved. I was shocked and hurt by her words. And I couldn't believe that she would stoop so low, but I didn't let her words bring me down. My parents were quick to shut her down. They told her that her jealousy was clouding her judgment and that she needed to accept my engagement and be happy for me. I focused on my upcoming wedding and was excited to celebrate with my loved ones. Despite my parents' efforts to talk sense into her, my sister continued to make snide remarks about me and my engagement. As the wedding date approached, she became more and more desperate to steal the spotlight away from me. A few weeks before the wedding, my sister started spreading rumors that I had stolen her boyfriend. She would tell anyone who would listen that she had been dating him for months and that I had swooped in and stolen him away from her. I was devastated when I heard these rumors. I had never even met her boyfriend, let alone stolen him from her. But my sister was determined to ruin my wedding by any means necessary. I tried to confront her about the rumors, but she would just laugh them off and say that I was too naive to understand how the world worked. It was clear to me that she was trying to sow seeds of doubt in the minds of my family and friends. I knew that I needed to prove my innocence to my family and friends, so I decided to confront the situation head-on. I told my parents about the rumors, and they were shocked and disappointed. They knew that my sister was jealous, but they didn't realize that she would go to such lengths to ruin my wedding. Together, we came up with a plan to clear my name. We invited my sister's boyfriend to the house and asked him to tell us the truth about his relationship with my sister. At first, he seemed hesitant to talk, but we assured him that we just wanted to get to the bottom of things. To our relief, he confirmed that he had never dated my sister and that he had no idea where she was getting these rumors from. He said that he had heard about my engagement and was happy for me, and that was the extent of his involvement. I was relieved and grateful to hear the truth from him. My parents were apologetic for putting him in such an awkward position. He also apologized for inadvertently perpetuating the rumors by not correcting my sister's lies earlier. He had never been romantically interested in her. Feeling grateful for his honesty, I asked if he would mind if I recorded our conversation, just in case my sister continued to spread rumors. He agreed, and I made sure to save the recording as evidence. A few days later, my sister's lies spread among our family and friends. I decided that it was time to take action, and I circulated the recording of the conversation to all of our family and friend groups. The recording quickly spread like wildfire, just like the rumors had, and it didn't take long for everyone to hear the truth. After hearing the recording, my family members, who had believed my sister's lies, were quick to apologize. They were ashamed of how they had treated me, and I could tell that they felt guilty for ever doubting me. It was a painful reminder that sometimes the people we love can let us down. My sister, on the other hand, was left to defend herself. She tried to explain away her lies, but nobody was buying them. My parents were disappointed in her. My whole family was disgusted by her behavior. She was quickly shut down whenever she tried to speak, and it was clear that she had lost the support of everyone around her. A few days after the incident, my sister came to my parents asking them for help. She was embarrassed and ashamed. 
They were stern with her. They reprimanded her for her behavior, telling her that they were disappointed in her and ashamed of what she had done. They reminded her of how much they had loved her, how much they had done for her over the years, and how she had repaid their kindness with such hateful behavior. My sister begged for forgiveness and tried to justify her actions, but my parents weren't having it. They told her that they couldn't trust her anymore and that she had lost their respect. They told her to leave, and they didn't want to see her again. It wasn't just my parents who disowned my sister. It was the rest of the family, too. My grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins all made it clear that they wanted nothing to do with her. It was tough to witness, and I didn't make them do any of it, but I didn't stop them either. I knew that it was necessary for my peace of mind and happiness. My grandparents, who had always been very fond of my sister, were especially hurt by her actions. They had always doted on her and given her special attention, but now they saw her for who she truly was. They didn't want to have anything to do with her anymore, and they made that clear in no uncertain terms. My aunts and uncles, who had always been close to my sister, were also deeply disappointed in her. They had seen her grow up and had always thought that she was a good person. Now they realized that she was capable of causing so much harm and pain, and they didn't want to associate with her anymore. Even my cousins, who had always been close to my sister, chose to side with me. They saw how hurt I was by her actions and how much pain she had caused our family. They didn't want to be associated with her anymore and they made that clear to her. Update 1. Three weeks ago, a call came in from my sister. I couldn't believe my sister had the audacity to call me after everything she had done. She wanted to apologize for her actions and try to justify her behavior again. However, I didn't want to hear it. I was still hurt by what she had done, and I couldn't forgive her just like that. I didn't respond and hung up on her. She called me again. I just stared at my phone, watching it ring. I felt a range of emotions, anger, sadness, disappointment, and even a little bit of pity for my sister. But ultimately, I knew that I couldn't just forgive and forget everything that had happened. I needed time to heal and process my emotions, and I didn't want her to think that a simple apology could make everything okay. Despite the drama caused by my sister, my wedding day was everything I could have dreamed of. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and I was surrounded by the people I loved the most. My husband and I exchanged our vows under a beautiful archway, and I felt like I was on top of the world. During the reception, my family and friends showered us with love and congratulations. My cousins and other relatives, who had previously been close to my sister, made a point to show their support and make it clear that they stood by me. N.T.A. Opsi says, in the wrong here. Her jealousy caused her to act destructively, but that's not an excuse. E.P.'s wedding was nearing, and on top of all that, she had to deal with rumors about her character. Brides are already stressed, as it is. N.T.A. her sister is Tia plus points to O.P. for not entertaining her apology. The parents had already warned her sister. It's a good thing she got kicked out. She would have only been more of a nuisance. Next story, I, 42, female, am an atheist, and I have a super religious husband, James, 50. We have two children, Ashley, 12, female, and Lucas, 10, male. James is Christian, and his family has always been very religious. They never miss church, go to confession, etc. This has never really been a problem until a few days ago. I always take care of bringing Ashley and Lucas to soccer practices, hockey practices, games, etc. However, Ashley's game was at 8 a.m., over an hour away, and Lucas's game was at 9 a.m., an hour away from home, and Ashley's game. Therefore, there was no possible way I could bring both my children to their games, so we agreed that I would bring Ashley to her game and he would bring Lucas to his game. James always insisted that he go to church on Sundays and never went to the 4 p.m., one on Saturdays that the church in our town offered. The church in our town offered three times, none of which James was able to attend. However, James found a church in the town where Lucas's game was. Right after his game, James said he would go to Mass after the game. James and Lucas got home nearly two hours later than I expected them to. Lucas was very mad and told the whole story. Apparently, James read the times wrong and left 10 minutes before the game ended to go to Mass, but he forgot about Lucas and made him wait an hour. I heard the story from James, too, and he said that he got caught up in praying and then talked to the priest. I told him that this was irresponsible of him and that he should have gone to Mass late. He should have gone to the Saturday one or, at the very least, not forgotten about our son. I got to hear a lot of opinions from James's family, but I think they are biased. Aita, edit, forgot to mention that yes, James is a Catholic and James's family believes that religion comes before kids. N. Tia from your post, I take it James is Catholic. I come from a super Catholic family, like my parents had seven priests from the entire diocese at their wedding. So, I know hardcore Catholicism, you're 100% correct. He could have gone to the Saturday Mass. He could have arrived late. He likely could have found a Sunday evening Mass. 
Usually, at least one parish in an area will have one. He could have left after communion. Not a great look, but technically permissible. He had multiple options that he could have exercised besides abandoning your child for two hours. Quite honestly, if James's home priest found out about this, I suspect he would have been pulled aside and given a talk about how God has placed his children in his care. That this is a sacred trust and how ordinary obligations such as weekly mass should never come before his children's safety and well-being. And if you wish to, you could reach out to James's priest and ask for the church to counsel James in this matter, since, as you are not a person of faith yourself, you are struggling to help him find the right balance. Nothing wrong with him being religious, as you seem to have worked together for years, but yes, he was completely in the wrong. He should have changed plans to attend the Saturday Mass, as trying to do too much at once was going to be a problem. And I don't think the Bible says you need to go to church at the expense of your family. Not very Christian of him. And more importantly, he isn't helping his own end game if he wants the kids to enjoy church. He's probably pushing his kids away from church if he puts it above them. Religion is important, but your 10-year-old kid is more important. You can't just ditch a 10-year-old for an hour and excuse it because you forgot. If anything, that's even worse than just leaving him there just because. 10 minutes late to mass is nothing compared to 60 minutes alone because your dad ditched you for it. Next story, my husband's brother, both 30s male, was adopted at birth. My husband is younger and was not adopted. Their older sister is also biologically related. Our families have been friends since I was a kid, so I guess I've always just kind of known that brother-in-law is adopted. Brother-in-law does not like to talk about being adopted, has never had an interest in knowing anything about his birth parents, and shares a lot of the same physical features as my husband and his parents, so no one ever questions if he was adopted. Because brother-in-law doesn't like the topic, no one ever brings it up. Brother-in-law met his wife, my sister-in-law, in their 20s. When they first started dating, she made a couple of comments about some similar physical attributes between the three siblings that made it seem like she didn't know he was adopted. I didn't say anything because it didn't seem like a big deal, and it's not my information to share. Both sister-in-law and I are struggling to get pregnant now. We were on a hike, just us two, and she made some comment about how maybe it's not us and our husbands that have some shared genetics that's the problem. I guess I made a surprised look when she said that. She asked me what the look was about, and instead of saying it was nothing, I told her that it's not my place to discuss and she should talk to brother-in-law. After we went home, I got some furious texts from brother-in-law saying I should not have even indicated that he wasn't biologically related to his family and that sister-in-law was upset. Sister-in-law texted me, upset that we all knew that she didn't know he was adopted and didn't say anything. She said she didn't care that he was adopted but felt like an idiot that everyone knew but her and that I should have just told her years ago. My husband says I should have just stayed out of it and went along with sister-in-law's suggestion that it was a shared biological problem. My sister-in-law is mad no one told her, especially me, since we are now friends. My brother-in-law is pissed that I told her his secret. I feel like I'm getting blamed for holding a secret that was not mine to give out. Am I really the a-hole here? I didn't mean to expose my brother-in-law's adoption, but I guess I felt a little cornered. Edit. One other thing to note. I kind of thought that she would have figured it out within the last five years because our husbands are less than five months apart in age. That's also why I think I looked surprised. NTA, that's the issue. She's both being blamed for giving away the secret and for keeping it. I don't think it's reasonable for the brother-in-law to expect her to lie. I would apologize to the sister-in-law because it wasn't your information to share, but no one thinks that she's an idiot. He's a brother, and that's how you treated him, and his identity needed to be treated with respect. It was not your place to say, and I would tell your brother-in-law and your husband that while you do respect his privacy, you weren't going to go and actively mislead someone. You never said anything out of respect for the brother's decision not to disclose it. But you also understand your sister-in-law, realizing she was the only one who didn't know, made her feel diminished, foolish, and misled. Just because the brother didn't want to say it doesn't mean his wife didn't want his wife to particularly since it was an open secret among everyone but her. Your husband needs to understand that you will not lie to perpetuate something you were just caught unaware of and, especially given the fertility question, weren't willing to just go along to confirm the lie while not revealing the truth. Both brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and husband are blaming you for something that is realistically brother-in-law's fault. I 100% understand being private and not wanting to discuss certain aspects of your life, but if you've been with someone for five years, married them, and are now trying to start a family with them, you need to tell them certain things, both as a sign that you trust them with the information and because the information has real-world implications, i.e., not being able to get pregnant easily. She should have known sooner, 
and you were right to say it wasn't your place to tell her. N.T. and none of this would have happened if brother-in-law hadn't kept a secret from his wife. You made an unplanned and involuntary facial expression in conversation, and when pressed for more information, told sister-in-law to ask her husband about it. I think that was the right thing to do in that situation. It wasn't your information to tell. Sister-in-law is wrong for saying you should have just told her, and brother-in-law is wrong for keeping it from her in the first place. Oh, and hubby is wrong for telling you that you should have lied to cover for brother-in-law. So, more like ESS except you. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.